Clojure is a new programming language created by Rich Hickey, which he introduced in about 2007. He maintains a website for the language at Clojure.org, and if you go there, you'll see there's some pretty good documentation. In fact, there's a link to screencasts where he gives some overviews of the language, including one which is intended for people who already know Java, and then another one intended for people who already know some other dialect of Lisp. If you're serious about learning Clojure, I definitely recommend you watch these videos, but the problem is that the one, say, about Java is, I think, uh, two and a half hours long. So it's really, really lengthy. And the reason it's so long is because uh, Rich Hickey spends a lot of time giving philosophical justifications for why he designed the language the way it is. So the idea behind this video is that it's something you should watch before you watch that. It's meant to be much shorter and just a more plain, straightforward explanation of the basic mechanisms in Clojure and how the language works. I'm going to assume for this video that you have at least a basic understanding of Java or maybe C Sharp as an alternative. And I also assume that you have at least a little bit of experience or familiarity with dynamic languages like JavaScript, Python, Ruby, or Perl. So let's start with a rundown of the features that make Clojure what it is. First off, Clojure is a dialect of Lisp. Lisp, if you're not familiar, was one of the very first programming languages invented back, I think, about 1957 or 56. And the original language called Lisp didn't last very long, but there were many imitators which are called dialects of Lisp. So today what we have are the dialects of Common Lisp and Scheme. Those are the two most prevalent today. And those have both been around for almost about 25 years, but now Clojure is a new one. It's a new dialect of Lisp. And like all dialects of Lisp, Clojure is a dynamic language, and it also has this key feature called macros, which we will explain. Clojure is also a functional language, and if you don't know what that means, uh, don't worry, I'll explain it in the next slide. But Clojure is also an impure functional language. It's not pure. Haskell is a pure functional language. Clojure is not. One of the biggest selling points of Clojure, and a feature that's gotten it lots of attention, is that it has this mechanism for lockless concurrency. Now when I say lockless, I don't literally mean that when you write concurrent code, there are no locks involved. It's just that the idea is you, the programmer, don't have to write the locking yourself. You don't have to handle any of that. Honestly, I think this feature gets too much attention. If you completely removed it, I think the case for using Clojure would still be very compelling. And also be clear that if you don't intend to write any concurrent code whatsoever, you don't have to understand this aspect of Clojure. You can simply ignore it. It's, it's actually much more like a library of the language that enables this feature. It's not an inherent feature of the syntax or the semantics of the language. So you can safely just ignore it. Another really interesting aspect of Clojure, and something unique among Lisp dialects, is that it's implemented for the JVM, for the Java Virtual Machine. That is so Closure source code gets compiled into Java bytecode, and that's how it runs. And in fact, the Closure compiler is implemented itself entirely in Java. So the way you invoke a Closure program is you do it in one of two ways. Either you just use this Java code as a library to then read in a Closure script file and execute it, or you use this Java class in the Closure code called script and script has a main method so you can invoke script as a program right from the command line and you pass to it as argument the name of the closure script file that you want to run. A big upside of closure running on the JVM is that it makes interoperation between closure code and Java code uh, extremely simple. It's a trivial thing to call a method of a Java class from closure code and in fact you can do the other way you can call from Java code you can invoke closure code though it's a, it's a bit more verbose going that way than the other. One big consequence of this is that Clojure doesn't really need all that much in the way of its own standard library. It doesn't need its own code for, say, just writing files. If you want to write to a file in Clojure, then you just use the already existing uh, Java classes. Another big upside of running on the JVM, or at least the JVM from Sun, the one with the hotspot JIT compiler, is that it's actually a very impressive piece of technology. It's been around for a long time, and over the years it's been very heavily optimized. And though of course most of this optimization work was done for the sake of Java, and Java is a static language, Java actually does have an element of dynamicism to it, and the, the work that went into making that aspect of Java fast uh, pays off when you implement a dynamic language on the JVM. Or at least this is what Rich Hickey essentially says in his screencasts, that he was very much surprised as he was implementing Clojure and what a good piece of technology the JVM is.
And so the consequence, or so it is claimed at least, is that Clojure is a surprisingly fast language, despite being dynamic. How fast exactly? Well, that's always a very tricky question, but we can essentially say it approaches the speed of Java itself. And so then, of course, the argument becomes how fast exactly is Java? And some people will argue that it's really just as fast as C and C++ nowadays, and then others will say, no, that's not no, that's nonsense. But the closest to consensus that I've ever seen is that whereas, say, Ruby and Python are often held to be as much as 100 times as slow as C, Java is sometimes up there with C and then sometimes dips down to about three or four times as slow. So on that spectrum of being either three or four times as slow as C or being 100 times slow as C, closure is much closer to three or four times rather than 100. And of course, I can't make any other guarantees other than your mileage may vary. Perhaps the most unique feature of Clojure are its persistent collections. I won't say anything about them now because I'm going to talk about them in a few slides. Finally, one of the most important selling points about Clojure to me is that I think it's really quite easy to learn. It's easy because the core of the language is really very, very small. There's just not all that much to say about it. Unlike many languages where there are endless exceptions to syntactical rules, for instance, in Clojure there's a really minimal set of syntax rules. Now this is generally true of any Lisp dialect, including both Common Lisp and Scheme. However, I don't think Common Lisp, and even Scheme, even though Scheme was deliberately designed as an educational language really, I don't think they're all that easy to learn. Partly I think this is because there's a misguided evangelism about Lisp. Lisp is typically evangelized in almost mystical terms that are really just not helpful to people standing outside the language trying to understand what's going on. Now, of course, if these earlier dialects of Lisp are simply being mistaught, then Clojure doesn't really have anything new to offer. We could just fix the way we teach the old dialects. But in fact, I think Clojure fixes a number of small issues. Individually, of course, these small issues aren't much of a hindrance, but together they add up and they make the language more confusing.